Hey guys, Ethereal Light Art here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new to this channel and you like light painting, long exposure photography, or creativity, you're in the right place. Please subscribe and like, share with your artist friends, leave me a comment, I do appreciate them. Thanks for joining me on this journey. All right, welcome everyone to the next episode of Dude, Where's My Flashlight? We have Martin Barras from Brighton, UK, a talented, amazing light painter, creative mind. Martin, it's so glad to have you on the show. How are you, mate? Thank you for having me. Yeah, cheers, mate. It's brilliant. Good to be here. <laughs> you know, I've been a huge fan of your work, um, and this is the reason why the podcast is to connect artists from all over the world, and this is amazing to get some time with you. Yeah. Uh, Martin, can you can you talk to us about, let's go back a little bit. Let's go back to the early days of when you just first maybe got into photography, and did that lead into light painting, or did light painting lead into photography? Take us back to the early years of when you started um, all. Yeah, so I started back in 2012. I mean, I, I sort of... Um, was doing HDR photography and landscapes more at the beginning but I had seen some light painting prior to this um there was like a I think it was a Spanish photographer that did this sort of um stick figure sitting on a, a swing and it was very moody and was amazing and I remember seeing it in the paper when I was on the train once and I just couldn't work out how it was done and didn't know if it was CGI didn't really understand the mechanics behind light painting or what it really was um and then obviously I got into photography later um, and then I kind of, it was a natural progression. There was a guy at my work that had gone out and done some orbs before and he showed me a picture and I was really fascinated. And I was like, oh, that's a bit like this stick figure I've seen. And he said, oh, you should come out and try it. So I did. And then the next day I was just so hooked with that, that initial sort of uh, encounter with like, you know, you could wave lights about and on bulb mode and, and create sort of anything you wanted, you know, that I, I went home and watched you know, I think the Boulder Light video and read up about Steel Wall and bought myself a whisk on Amazon the next day. You know, it, it was it was quite quite quick how quickly I got involved or wanted to get involved in it really. But yeah, it's it's good. It's a it's a it's been a journey so far. Yeah, you know, it is a journey, and like you said, you're just always continuing to learn. It doesn't feel like eight years because when you're in this kind of mode of creating you just kind of lose sense of time honestly i mean you're in a different for me i'm in a different realm i'm in a different headspace uh where time honestly doesn't really exist and i i totally understand what you're saying the eight years can fly by i mean i've been i'm coming up on my three-year anniversary and yeah. and it's 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 been quite <laughs> it's been quite the journey yeah. um can you can you mark can you tell us about a favorite uh light painting project or adventure and who you were with and where oh. you were what kind of adventures? I mean, I, I've been lucky to sort of be involved in some of the some amazing sort of um, European and and American meetups, really, which has been been amazing. Um, I, the first one um, that I went to uh, over in Europe was um, organised by Mafu, and it was um, the Light Painters United. The first one in Berlin um, and Sven and uh, Gunnar um, just did an amazing job. It was just just awe inspiring. Just being in the company of those guys and Dan was there, Dan Chick, and all these other people. It was just incredible, which just blew my mind, really. I come back from that so sort of stoked and fired up. Um, and then and then we went to Belgium the next year um, and drove um, to meet Pala. So it was like two cars, and it was like um, from the UK, this is, like the UK guys. So it was me and Dan Whitaker and Comeg yeah. in one car and Phil and Tim Gamble um, in another, and we just basically uh, did a road trip down to Belgium and, and ended up painting in some like vast quarries that were just incredible with 
people like Mass and Pala, and it was just immense, immense. It just, yeah, I don't think anything's really sort of top those. Um, the the Light Up Berlin we went to recently, that was amazing as well, and that that's more sort of focused on sort of like teaching people rather than just a get together and and shoot. But you know, I definitely enjoy the ones where we're just all out shooting because it's it's that's what we love doing, isn't it? Really. You know? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's funny because at some point during the journey, you know, at least for me, I, I feel like I need to maybe give back or teach, you know, at some point, because and I think that's why Light, Light Up Berlin was so great the last year, the last time they did it, is because they did have some classes and it gives actually the artist a chance to actually say, hey, look, here's my technique. This is what I came up with. This is what I want to share. This is what I want to teach to uh, the community and to, you know, to have us grow and progress. Mm. I think I think that's really important for us as a community to actually just keep progressing. Yeah, and since those guys you mentioned, I mean, of course, you know, the UK crew just you know phenomenal, uh, and it, it sort of a leads us. Of good lads, yeah, definitely. Uh, it's I, good. It's good I, fun. Whenever we get together, it's always a bit of a giggle. Yeah, it's pure gold. <laughs> you know, it, it's just it's just pure gold. I've had I've had you know Kim Crumble on on the show, and and yeah. obviously you know using lens swapping stencils. You know, I think of her. I think of you. I think of Tim Gamble, Phil Fisher. I mean, they just that that crew is just very yeah. creative, um, and honestly, a little bit maybe further advanced because when you talk about some of these advanced techniques this isn't beginning or immediate light painting this is actually advanced photography light painting and it kind of leads me into the next to the next question is you know obviously the image behind you uh can you can you kind of maybe go through look at look at this masterpiece here i mean this for me it's blowing my mind i mean i i kind of have an idea of what what's going on here but can you tell the audience that might not really understand what a lens swap even is or yeah, what it yeah, is. Sure. Or try yeah. I mean, I can show you, I mean, it's, it's as simple as, as, as it sounds really. So, you know, on a, on a camera, you know, you've got, you've got your, you know, remove lens button. So once the, the camera is actually on and it's shooting, literally you just cap the lens take the lens off in the dark. This is all done in complete darkness, obviously take the lens off, take another lens, put it on, and then take the lens cap off and and you're carrying on the rest of your shot i mean that's oversimplifying it a little bit but it but it is no different to that it is a very tricky operation in the dark to take off a lens you know but once you've got the lens cap back on you can use a torch and check your settings you know if you've got a manual um lens you know you'll be able to check your f-stop you know and your focus and you'd have really already worked out out these sort of positions before you know before you take the shot that's all the setup takes longer than the actual shot probably 90 percent of the time with these kind of shots because you it's all about balancing the light or you know working out your settings first your focus and which bits are going to go where and what operations you're going to do in certain stages i mean i think um gunner described it really well and said it's not taking a photo it's engineering a photo light painting in total but definitely on these sort of complicated kind of um shots i think it is more engineering than it is actually a photography do you know what i mean as well i i sure do um which i which i love and for me personally uh i'm more on the painting side of light painting i'm like i'm, a, I'm an illustrator i'm a, i'm actually a painter i spend more of my time actually putting color into the scene and for me, I've been super scared to go into this realm because, you know, I find it challenging and I don't really want to spend my five minutes of not seeing what I've done and then doing a lens swap and then getting that part wrong yeah. and then actually, you know, kind of screwing up my my art that I just painted. Yeah, that, um, that is a risk. <laughs> with all, with, when you start, you know, it, is, yeah. it is a risk, but sometimes you get the happy accident out of it. You know, and, and and like all parts of light painting, you know, the, the only way really to learn it is to do it. Yeah. And, and it's really, when I first started, it was the most sort of awkward thing in the world to take a lens off in the dark and reset yeah. it. And it almost like sets stress levels in my shoulders when I'm yeah. doing it. But now it's just on the floor, pop it off, pop it on. And it is, you, you, you know where to feel for the lens where there's, sometimes there's a little bump that where the keyway is. So you know when to put it on and then take it off without damaging it. And you can feel for the contacts before you put it on. So it's all little te te techniques and tricks. But that only comes through practice of doing that. You know, that yeah. you know, take your lens on and off with your eyes closed a few times. Yes. That's, a, that's a good good way of practicing it. I mean, for this shot, it's, it's sort of, it's not massively complicated. 
Um, so it's a an artist dummy sort of head. It's like a you know a model head they used to use for wigs or. So it's one of those set up on a tripod stand, and then in front of it I've got a stencil, um, and then I've also got a PCB set up on another tripod stand. So I've actually used uh, like a prism on my first lens. Um, so you can see the lines in the PCB. That's obviously where the prisms distort in the PCB and just make it a bit more interesting. And there's something that, um, you know, a lot of us use, but, you know, credit goes to people like TCB from the US who who did this sort of stuff first. And, and I would probably say Donnie did it better than probably most of us would do it. He was just amazing and real trailblazer in his time as well. Um, so basically that's the first part of the shot then I've capped it, then I've swapped to another lens, and then I've got a stencil in front of the, the, the head that I was saying. So, again, like Kim's shown, yeah. you know, it's just a cardboard stencil that you can see. Not this yeah. actual one, but very similar, and I have it set up in a, a photo frame, so basically I can put it in, and I know where it is every time, and that's mounted on a tripod, um, which cool. makes it nice and easy to get them in and swap them if you want to swap them around without changing the settings and where it is. Um, and then basically I've wafted some um, black fibre optic gelled orange behind the, the figure and then removed that and then basically put a laser on with a bit of vape and then I've put an LED wand in front of the figure's face so you've got the, the figure there um, so it's swiped down this way so you get the reflection on the plastic but you don't see the actual LEDs on the camera. So a bit like a the light scanner, but just with a, an LED wand with addressable LEDs on it. So you get that kind of nice sort of reflection in the in the plastic as well. And, and that's basically it. You know, it's just a matter of, it was only like a two let swapped lenses twice. Um, yeah. It's sort of a pretty simple one, but it looks more complicated than it really is. Well, you know, funny, uh, most advanced light painting is a little bit more simpler yeah. than looks you yeah. know um, yeah, and once you break it down you're like yeah. oh well if i just actually do these four steps and i do yeah. them correctly yeah then i'm gonna have, an, or have a piece of art that looks yeah. like this it's almost um, like performance art in some respects because it, it's the it's the actual you know, you know where where like oh, someone like yourself or mass you know you're drawing uh, and and you know actually it is performance this is in some respects but it's a, it's like the technicality bit so you're performing yeah. taking the lens off setting the thing and it's almost a, a set of steps that you go through it almost like a little dance to get to the end and then you finish it and there it pops up and you're like oh, okay yeah I've nailed it this time or I'm gonna have to do it again you know and there's always something you'll want to change you know I mean I think on this series I did I must have done four or five one night of, of this sort of head and, and the mixture and then it gave me some ideas the next day and then I did one that had the sort of orange bokeh with a reversed Helios lens that looked more like clouds into it you know and it just kind of led into a little series for a few days where I was turning over ideas and I could leave it set up in the room and I'd come back and I'd write you know I'm going to change this now and do something else and you know and that, that's good when you get that little sort of groove of, of ideas and work that sort of comes out yeah it's good. Oh, it's good fun, mate. You know, it's healthy for the soul. It's healthy for the mind. I mean, yeah, it's exactly, the reason yeah. why we light paint, to be honest with you. Um, I couldn't say it better when this is a live performance. This is a performance art, you know, whether it's in the dark and you can't see yourself perform. But this is there's four or five major dance steps yeah. in this photo right here, um, like you described. And and it, it's, it's a beautiful piece of art. Um, Martin, how, how did you get the rainbow almost oil slick? Is that is that part of the scanner? That's, that's yeah, that's the LED. So it's um a bit like a pixel stick, but I've made a smaller one. I mean, I've got I've got m multiple ones of these that I've made myself or I've adapted. This one's an old one um, off uh, using a pixel stick um, controller. But basically, this is three sets of addressable LEDs around a triangular um, sort of stick so you know no matter where i wave it in the frame it's going to see a set of leds so you get a continuous pattern of it but the the one that i use for that shot has just got one row so when i turn it away from me and towards the light and i go like that it's not seen by the camera just the light is so like, like, like the same principle as a scanner is but obviously these leds great give a great color range you get like beautiful purples and reds and oranges and yellows and you know, it's just just what it's almost just hypnotizing watching those LEDs on their own sometimes. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. 
Um, okay, so I, I love this. This is a breakdown of this beautiful image, mate. Um, are there any, uh, besides this exact image, are there any tips and tricks? Um, I know, is there a set, no, I guess, sequence or sequential to your dance is in a way? Like, are you doing, are you doing the same uh, sequence every time on a, on a piece like this? Are you doing the stencil first? Not necessarily, yeah. So, I mean, stencil can be like one, of, it's going to be one of the first elements. It doesn't need to be necessarily the first, can be the first. Um, yeah. I mean, stuff like the background, I'd probably try to do first, something like the PCB, um, like I have done in this one, um, can be tricky to get it just exactly right because obviously you're yeah. waving a torch behind the, the PCB and, and getting the light to come through the PCB. And that's part yeah, of the yeah. trick is to get a decent, you know, PCB out of a computer that's, if you put a torch behind it, you can see all the, the inside parts of it, you know. That, and, and, and big it, enough. It's got to be big I, enough. To I've got small lens, ones right? like this big. If you've got a macro lens, you know, okay. you don't need a particularly big one. Yeah. Um, obviously, if you can get motherboards out of a, <laughs> a server or something, then you're laughing. I think Tim's got a very big one as well. but. Yeah. You know, we we have um, I've used small ones, and I've given Tim one that was about this big that that's got loads of really cool patterns on. I always keep an eye out for them if I see them. So um, I tend to do those sort of that background first, and then the stencil, and then okay. anything else like lasers and and yeah. you know, sparklers or right. them outside or inside really. But with lens swapping, uh, quite an important thing. I mean, you don't need two lenses. You can do um, lensless to one lens, but if you've got yeah. manual lenses, they're the best thing to use because um, obviously you've got full control over the lens. Once you put the lens cap on, you know, you can set the f-stop as well. But if you don't, then the best thing to do is some of the cameras, um, you've got a depth of field button. This is a tip Dan Whitaker passed on to me and Tim, is that once you set, when you're at the beginning of your setup, if you put on the auto lens first, um, set the f-stop manually and then press the depth of field button and take the lens off, it retains where it was on the f-stop. So when you then put it back on, it's at the f-stop you set it at, not defaulted back to either fully open or fully closed, depending on what kind of lens you get, which is quite a good tip. So, you know, you can you can, you can can mitigate some of the issues you find with having not two manual lenses, you know, by doing certain techniques and tricks. So, awesome. Awesome. And uh, would you say that majority of your artwork right now is is a series of, of this kind of art right here? This uh, Yeah, this... I mean, I think when I look back through my Flickr stream, I think probably I've lens swapped continually since 2016. I think most of my shots have a lens swap in. It's very rare if they don't. Um, yeah. It's quite nice when I don't do. I mean, sometimes I'll go out with Dan and I'll just, you know, I, I might take one lens and, you know, I'll just take a limited amount of kit or very light kit rather than drag two big heavy bags around. And it's quite oh. refreshing that and, and sort of, you know, spiritual because you can kind of like, oh, God, I don't have, to, don't have to worry about doing all this really technical stuff. I can just light paint and enjoy the evening. You know, sometimes it's just nice to be out in the outside and, yeah. No, amen, brother. Uh, you know, I, I couldn't have said it any better. I think I think that's I think that's the reason why, you know, I, I keep talking about spirituality in, in my art. But, I mean, you, you said it best. It's like. If I'm having to worry about too much little, you know, technical stuff, yeah. then I'm starting to worry about the process and not the flow, you know. And and so for me, I, I feel like I need to flow a little bit more in, in the freestyle. Bit. Yeah, it's a good, good style uh, to be in. I mean, ATB, you know, uh, you know, mass and, and and people like that, you know, amazing, amazing, you know. Yeah. So that's a, it's, that's it's, it's, yeah. No, I couldn't agree more, man. Um, Martin, is there is there any type of light painting that you haven't tried that you're like oh i really kind of want to get into that i just haven't yet or uh, is there anything um i I've, i haven't done so much but sort of um for a long time sort of orbs and stuff like that i mean yeah. i do enjoy spinning them but my over the time if you don't practice a lot your, your spinning gets uh, worse so uh, <laughs> you know, I, I don't generally like put pictures up with them in because i don't do enough of it to to be a rare you know it's no no nowhere close to someone like dennis but you can tell where it's a wonky orb <laughs> Um, yeah. I, I I like to do the stuff like Phil does, you know, the, just the sort of pure light painting, um, yeah. of just lighting buildings up. I don't do enough of that, but, you know, I, I prefer the technical stuff is yeah. where my interest is. So, you know, I, I, I generally, you know, I might try something else for a little bit, but I'll end up going back to it or trying to incorporate something else. So, you know, I sort of played a little bit with the mass sort of style, not very well. 
but yeah. I did incorporate with some rotation and some, you know, some sort of um, urbex scenes as well, just to make it a bit more interesting and a bit more mine in, when I've tried it. So. Cool. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, you know, you've mentioned some amazing, amazing artists uh, just in this first 20 minutes of the podcast. Are, are there two artists inside of light painting or outside of light painting in your life that you have been inspired by or that, is, that have taught you something yeah. or inspired you to be a better artist? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, uh, TCB is obviously the main one for me. Um, but obviously, um, Neil Ellie D. Eddie um, is another big one. When I first started, he he was incredible. And, you know, I've, out of that, I've been lucky enough um, to know Dan Whitaker very well and, you know, shoot with Dan a lot. And Dan were Dan and Ellie D. Eddie were like the two people that I first saw that I was just like, wow, that's amazing. I want to do stuff like that. Um, and, and, you know, I've been lucky enough to go shoot with Dan a lot and, and we've had some good times out and, you know, he's become a good friend now, which is good as well. So Amazing. Amazing, mate. Well, yeah, it, it, I couldn't say I'm a huge fan of Dan, a huge fan of TCB. Everyone you mentioned, a uh, huge fan on this end. Um, I think the community can agree. Uh, they're pioneers, like you said, they're trailblazers in, in a lot of ways. Um, you know, we stand on the shoulders of giants, and those are the giants that's good, that's that we good are way of putting it. On. Definitely. And it, honestly, it's good. It's it's really healthy to give respect to those who have come before us and who have helped us on our journey. Um, yeah, uh, moving along, man. Uh, when you're not light painting, Martin, what are you doing? What what, what are you filling your time with? What do you what do you? <laughs> well, obviously I've got, I've, got you son, I've got a young son and a family, so that that takes up a fair bit of time. Um, but yeah. you know, when I do get some time to myself, I, I like to sort of make uh, electronic music. Not not particularly very good, but you know, I like I like synths, synths, uh, old analog synthesizers, and and you know, bits of gear like that. So I like to have a tinker and a bit of a play. So that's quite good fun. Um, and obviously I do a bit of um, 3D design. So, you know, I've got a 3D printer. Some of the tools I've, I use and some of the props, you know, are stuff like 3D printed hands and you know, okay. <laughs> a bit of design and a bit of printing as well, which is sort of fills up my time. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, I never even thought about doing 3D printing of props. 3D printing. I did a oh. talk in... in um, in Photokina back in 2016 and and part of it was like 3D printing if you get one tool as a, as a light painter it's a 3D <sighs> printer because it, you literally can go you know especially for indoor work like you know the technical stuff or you know I could really do with something like a mask or a hand or you know you can be able to find a design even if you can't design it yourself somebody would have designed a hand like that one you know and a couple of hours later you can have a prop you know and you haven't had to buy it you know you can just get on and print it it's, it's it's a really amazing tool which i don't think is really you know as explored enough for light paint especially because we're all creative people you know it is just good to be able to get something can actually get your idea and have a have something you can use for a shop the next day so you're already blowing my mind as far as ideas they're already just spewing out of me just thinking about things i want to do we're heading into winter uh and so yeah, there's a lot of time, time get, tools up, you know, get, get your tools ready and yeah get your tools ready mate because you know here we go we're back yeah. into the studio yeah, for exactly. you know a session i'm actually ending this this podcast uh soon this is this is one of the final episodes and it'll it'll give me time in the off season to actually finish some projects that I've been thinking about doing. Nice. Um, I want to actually talk about uh, another image of you or yours that you sent me. It's the one that, yeah, it's outside and yeah. I love it because it has some major depths to it. Can we talk about this image? Yeah, so um, that's two Tim Gambles actually, to be fair. So um, there was uh, one of the trips away that we did. So, we, you know, some, some of the UK guys, we've been away camping a few times um, to places like Wales and to Yorkshire for a weekend. Uh, there would be like maybe like four or five, six of us. Um, and we'll go away and, and hit up this sort of um, place to shoot. And this is a, a spot that I think Phil found it first um, on a holiday with his um, his missus. And, and it, it's like an old abandoned slate mine. So there's tunnels, there's slate everywhere. There's, you know, ama amazing views and vistas, you know, everywhere you look from up there. It's just a beautiful part of the country. Um, and it's another lens swap. You know, I've set up one tripod opposite a, a small bush about, you know, it's probably about this high, a couple of inches high. Um, and I've got Tim to kneel by it. And then basically I just made it carefully lit the top part. So it was a pop of a flash and some vape so you've got Tim then crouched in 
and then I swapped to another tripod that was facing just a little way up the hill, um, a tunnel that was like the, the, the guys that were mining this place back in 1800, you know, drove these tunnels into the into the rock to get the slate out. And this is one of them. So I got Tim to stand in front of that and I'd pre-set up a laser and a flash. And then it was quite simply uncap the lens, you know, pop the flash and then ca <laughs> capture small Tim and big Tim. You know, oh, wow. and I like this because obviously it's picked up a bit of the stars as well. And it's a, it's an outside. A lot of my sort of um, complicated work is indoors. Um, yeah. And I do like to be outside as well. But, you know, not everything translates as well outside as it does indoors. Some of it does. But, you know, it was, it was a good it was a good session. And it's a really amazing weekend. This one, I seem to remember. <laughs> a lot of wine was drunk after after each night <laughs> when we got back all the morning. I, I mean, it's it's almost uh, standard. It's t typical protocol. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly, exactly. <laughs> and you know, honestly, I see a lot of vape and lasers coming out of the UK in that kind of in that era. Is there a type of laser that is better than the other? Like, is there a what's um, the most what's the most powerful laser? I, that I you mean, you have? can get like two two watt lasers, but I mean, you, you got to be bear in mind the way you're shooting with a laser. You know, if it's in the sky and and you hit a plane. You know, and blind yeah. a pilot, you, you're going to attract police uh, helicopters to you pretty quick, I'd imagine. Um, so you got to be careful where you're shooting. Um, obviously, the more powerful the laser, the more chance you've got of damaging your um, camera. So okay. good tip is obviously if you've got somebody standing in front of it like this, is don't take your lens cap off your lens until you know, you know, you've got some smoke in the air. You can see where the beams go. You can yeah. walk back to your lens, and you can see on the lens cap whether you've got any spots of laser on the lens cap. If you haven't. Then you know you're good to take the lens cap off, which is a good tip. Oh. A laser will kill your camera really quickly, oh, um, kill the sensor. Um, oh. This this is a one watt laser, so this is probably like well overpowered for what it needs to be. Um, oh. It's got a small one from China. Yeah. But the eBay do like a 303 lasers, the like green lasers with a little diffraction grating in, about nine ten pounds, so probably. You know, ten dollars, something like that. There, there, there is a. That's all the power you need, really, and, and vape or some kind of smoke uh, yeah. to pick up the the actual beams themselves. I love it. I love it. And are you technically taking the laser and just doing a quick circle, and that's how it's? No, getting... no, it's just it's just you want it to be stationary. So on a light stand, or or in this case, I've got like the flash on a flash stand, and I've literally just put the laser on top and whack some, you know, gaffer tape around it, holding it on in the right place, so I can just go back, turn it on. Just let it be, you know, it's only a couple of seconds you need it on for with the smoke, turn it off and then come back and pop the pop the flash, you know, and that's it. That's as simple as it is. But it is a couple of seconds. You don't need money much, much more than that. Otherwise, it really does burn out the, the, the frame quite quickly. Totally. Oh, wow. Awesome. Well, you know, we had another huge tip here. That's amazing, mate. That's amazing. <laughs> Oh, well, uh, you know, I want to kind of talk maybe not so technical. I want to maybe get into more philosophical and in the creative uh, mind space. How does this, how does inspiration come to you and where does it come from? Oh, um, so I'd love to say that, you know, I'm like inspired all the time by all this, this stuff. I mean, it's probably books and movies like most people, you know, and, and you know, other artists as well. You know, I'll see some somebody do something amazing and and. I want to know how they've done that, you know, and I'll try it myself. Um, but yeah, like stories, films, you know, old rave school, old school rave flyers, you know, from the dance music sort of early era, you know, that kind of thing. You know, the visuals were quite trippy, you know, sort of um, Cheech and Chong, <laughs> all those kind of, you know, you know, that kind of sort of like 70s, uh, you know, sort of uh, psychedelia, you know, that kind of thing has always sort of sparked a bit of an interest there. Um, but yeah, it just it just it comes from those sort of things. That, you know, it's not, not nothing really too complicated. It just just you know, if I if I see something I like, I'll, I'll probably want to try it. Or you know, I might see an image and think that might translate to light painting. I'll try something similar, you know, and 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 give it a go. So you know, it's not not maybe as spiritual and as deep as some people. You know, I know I have a proper drive at it, but you know, I'm probably a bit more of a I like the technical stuff of light painting, like the tools and the flashlights. I'm a bit of a geek like that, you know. Yeah. yeah. Totally. <laughs> do you ever start with a concept and then try to figure out how to paint it? Or yeah. do you just, you know, yeah. At the beginning, at the beginning, I used to sort of draw pictures down and, and, and have ideas, you know, while I was working and, and go, you know, I want to, this is how I want to do it. 
Um, not so much now. I, you know, I sort of go to a location and I'll have a look around and hopefully something will jump out of me to, to you know, inspire me to, to do. Sometimes I'll go with a shot in my head and, you know, normally yeah. I'll do that, you know, but that can be driven by, you know, different things. Like, you know, I might have seen something I want to rotate there and then I'll sort of build the picture up around around it, really, rather than have an image of or an idea of what I want to start with. You know, it's more of a, you know, trial and error sometimes, actually. Yeah. yeah. Have you felt like you've always been creative your whole life? Yeah, I used to draw and, you know, I used to play the guitar, you know, so I've had, I've had you know, different bits of sort of creative, creative uh, interests throughout my life. Yeah. Uh, and I think, like, obviously, photography is quite a, a good one, really. You know, it's like filmmaking as well. You know, I think if you if you're sort of like visuals and, you know, the next clubber and, you know, used to like lasers and lights and stuff like that, you know, this is a it's a good a good next step as you get a bit too old to go clubbing <laughs> go hang out in the dark and, and fire lasers at people you know in the, in the woods with some smoke <laughs> so, yeah. i couldn't agree more you know i i definitely like my electronic music uh like you i was i was the guy that needed like three or four feet around me a uh, radius around me because i was dancing so viol not violently but you know uh, exuberantly is probably yeah, the best yeah. I was dancing exuberantly, and so I needed a little bit of space around me. I was always the guy next to the speaker, you know, like getting that really, you yeah, know. Get the bass. <laughs> <laughs> and getting yeah. feeling it, you know, not just hearing it, but I was feeling it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You want it for your body. <laughs> I want it for my body. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's a, it's a feeling. It's a full experience. It's not just, uh, you know, hearing it. It's actually an experience, um, which I actually, I think it translates, you know, maybe into my art. You know, I, I definitely... I sometimes paint with a blindfold on. I'm not sure if, if you know that, but you know, you, you talked about you talked about closing your eyes and doing the lens swap in the dark and being able to do that almost mindlessly, almost effortlessly. It's like, okay, this comes like my paintbrush is an extension of my hand where you know I don't really see the difference. It's just like where what happens. And and I think that's really important for people that really kind of bring in more of their senses uh into anything in, in into into their life, you know, just almost like a meditative dance isn't it you know i get you know you know this the steps you take and you know it, you're you know sort of a release isn't it by the end of it you know you've sort of unwound from yeah. through it really for these steps you know I, I, that's why i see it in a little way i mean you know, it is it is it's therapeutic you know and, and and i really find i really find painting light painting photography just creating anything you know being an artist is just therapeutic it's just there's a major release of we're, we're carrying so much stress and and, and things that are happening in the world right now that, that to have a release of this um, and to create something that can last forever um, that could be aesthetically pleasing or just doesn't have to be aesthetically pleasing. It just has to be, you're just yeah. doing something, just right? Doing it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love it, I love it. Um, so speaking along these lines, you know, Mark, can you, do you have a specific teacher? And it doesn't have to be, who has been the most inspirational teacher in your life um doesn't have to be light painting or oh, anything probably, probably my parents you know that's got to be my parents i think probably most people would probably say that I, I suspect as well wouldn't they you know yeah you know, without them you wouldn't be where you are you know and my mum and my dad you know both both of them have been like uh you know unfortunately my dad passed away um you know about eight years ago uh 10 years ago now actually um so it's sort of uh you know that was quite as well, an emotional time, but you know my my mum's always been a bit of a rock and always been there, which is which is amazing. Yeah. Awesome. And does she live close to you? Yeah, she's not too far away. She's about sixteen miles away from where we live in at the moment, so not too far. So close enough to go visit re regularly enough. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, you know, with the uh, the pandemic and some travel bans and everything else, I mean, it's just really tough to get together for a you know a meetup. You know, you yeah. mentioned. Sven and, and Mafu and those guys earlier on from Light Painters United. Um, Mark, Martin, can you talk to us about High and 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 what maybe that community is and and, and how wonderful uh, and support and explain maybe what it is and because I, I want to join that community. I feel like uh, I, I I love everyone in the in the community and I want to help and support that. Yeah. Um, but I feel like it's a little bit tricky, you know. I yeah, feel like it's, it's quite complicated. I mean, don't get me wrong. You're not, you're not, you're not, yeah, you're not, you're not alone in that. Yeah, I find it quite complicated. I think it, 
you know, I think yeah, the younger you are, you probably pick up these different sort of social media platforms a lot quicker, ah. you know, but I, I sort of, I was like, I don't get this when I first first joined. I mean, I haven't been as active on Hive, I have to, I have to admit, um, in the last few months, obviously because of the pandemic, I haven't gone out as much and yeah. shot. It's, it's hard to be creative in this kind of environment, isn't it, really? You know, lockdowns and, and the fear yeah. of, you know, getting something and passing it on to your loved ones, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, it's a real real stressful time I think for for most people you know and knowing where the next paycheck's coming for some people as well um but yeah Hive Hive is um obviously you know a complete sort of watershed to something like Facebook where you just post a picture and you know you get a few likes and a few comments you know you you can actually earn money through your image you know it's you post the picture up um hopefully it's the first place you post it um a few tags and then if if um People, I think that the way it works is, you know, some some people have obviously got a lot more sort of like bitcoins and that, and they obviously have a lot more influence, uh, you know, but the the version of Hive, you know, the, the the Hive coin itself, you know, and if they like your work and and vote on it, then obviously it gets a um, a bit more of a bigger share in it, you know, so you can you can earn a few a few dollars per per photo. I mean, like I said, I haven't been as active as people like Tim maybe or Mafu, I know, is very active in it, and Dawn. You know, um, but it, it but it's definitely I think the future for light painters, and it's a good community over there as well. You know, they're very supportive of each other as well, which is is good. I know Matthew's done a lot of work to drive that to be, you know, as successful as it is at the moment. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, hats off to Mafu and and the effort uh, and everyone in the community. Um, yeah. And people like Hugo Baptista, I mean, not only an amazing light painter, who is just probably like the one of the most you know consistently original in his work and output but he's he's done things like do, do the bat he's um like painted the banner you know and been very sort of uh, instrumental in 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 what he's done over there as well and uh, to... amazing oh yeah. man I, yes I, I actually yeah when i was in uh the lp uh, wa meetup in paris yeah i had a chance to meet a, a bunch of these guys and and it changed my life it changed my journey as an artist you know just being around and I was young then I actually was only light painting for about six months and and I wanted to go and and see Paris and I wanted to see Europe and and I wanted to meet these amazing artists and see if this is my life path or at least the next you know foreseeable future and uh, it turned out that it, it was and so it was a good decision and and uh, can't say thanks enough I'm so full of uh, gratitude for them yeah, it's just pity the um, COVID struck because I think we'd obviously have all had some kind of meet up this year. I think, you know, people were trying to organise something when they get a few of you guys and get a few of us over, maybe over to the US. But, you know, I don't know, you know whether that's still actually sort of be possible now. With, you know, well, I think we're just about to enter some more restrictions on, on movement and, and, you know, second wave, you know, so I don't know. No, and, and the way this country, the USA, has been handling pretty much any issue uh, with, you know, it has just been ludicrous. And so we are definitely destined for a second wave. Um, and, we, you know, there was a there was a meetup with Dan Roberts, actually, in Denver, Colorado. Yeah. Uh, actually, it's happening this weekend, and we were going to go, but, you know, there's over a million and a half acres burned uh, on the west coast of the USA. Uh, and so, you know, I, it's, it's tough to travel yeah. um, when there's a pandemic, you know, forest fires raging. Uh, yeah. Pretty, yeah. pretty much it can get much worse to, and worse than other than a zombie apocalypse or something. That's all you need now. And then you've got all three for this year, haven't you, really? You know? Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure if you saw any pictures, but literally our sky was orange. Our yeah. sky literally during the day and night. I mean, it was just orange for a day and a half to two days. I've seen days. a few of the light painters from out the US. We've got a couple of them got affected. And there was, um, I can't remember the lady's name, but she her house um, burnt down, um, which is terrible things. You can't even imagine that, really, you know. Uh, you know. Yeah, no, it's it's crazy, mate. It's crazy. Um, you know, Martin, I ask every single person on the podcast if yeah. they could pick one song that best represents them as an artist. Um, it doesn't have to be what you like paint to. It just can be one song that you would like to give to the community. What song are you going to add? Oh, that's a difficult one, actually. Uh, yes, since you're a musical artist. Uh, I'm going to say Massive Attack Teardrops. Yeah, uh, right. I, I love Massive Attack. You know, I, I'm I'm more into sort of like techno myself personally, but you know, this sort of that sort of um, 
that album was just seminal album and just just amazing you know and just the whole album's worth a listen there's not just one song go listen to the whole album you know, yes it still sounds fresh today i think personally to be fair i couldn't agree more i'm very 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 familiar with the song in fact uh, when i first heard the song i had uh there's a thing called couch surfing. It's not so big anymore, but there's a big organization that let, lets travelers stay on your couch for free yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and it helps them out a bit. And I'm a, I'm a huge community member. I've, I've done it for over a decade and I've hosted a, a, a ton of people, but um, one of the travelers performed for me for the end of this song, <laughs> the Angel Wings. And it was well, like, <laughs> oh my God, I'm sitting there on the floor, Indian, like, you know, cross-legged Indian style, crisscross applesauce. And I'm literally staring, like looking at this amazing angel happening in, in my living room, yeah. like it was Christmas and I was five years old. I mean, I was just like, I, I, it, was, it was really honestly transformative for me and, and to the point where I was like, wow, somebody's performing to this song and it's a live performance art. And it was so beautiful and, and insp inspirational to me that I was like, man, I should really start maybe expressing my creativity. And so thank you for requesting that song. It's, it's yeah, an amazing yeah. one, and yeah. I can't wait to add it. Hopefully no one else has picked that one. I don't know, did anybody else pick that? I guess. No, 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 no one has. Good. In fact, actually, it's the first <laughs> Massive Attack uh, song uh, on the list, and it's great. I actually paint to it uh, sometimes. It's actually on a, a lot of my different lists, um, and I love it. It's a great song, so thank you for adding that. Um, Martin, is there any advice that if you could go back in time uh, to when you first started light painting or any, any photography, is there is there something that you would be like, man, I really wish I would have known this or something that keeps stumbling? You're like, man, I know this, but what, what kind of advice would you give yourself if you could go back in time? I'd probably give myself the advice, you know, if I go back to 2012, I'd teach myself, you know, what I use for, for a rotation now, you know, I've got a a pretty lightweight gimbal set up, um, a pan, pan a head set up rather than a, a heavy gimbal or the one I, I made myself right at the beginning, which was like even heavier than that and more bulky. You know, I'd be like, take this and you'll save yourself, you know, backache and a lot of room in your bag where you can fit a few more torches. You know, I think I think the good thing now about if you're starting light painting now is that the community is a lot more sort of sharing um, for information. You know, back when I started, you know, there was people doing rotation but no one would tell anybody how they did it you know if you wanted to learn it and, and like I did you know I had to have an idea myself of how I could do it go and build something put yeah. my camera on and and attempt it and luckily you know the way that I had I'd thought about you know how I could rotate worked you know and that's how I got into it but you know now there's resources you know there's obviously you you and your amazing podcast you know Dennis and his uh, school of light you know, there's a Facebook group for rotation, you know, there's a Facebook group for lens swapping, you know, you know, there's, there's resources and you can just ask any of the artists, you know, and most people are really happy to help. I mean, I know when Phil started, he, he said to me, oh, do you want to come down and have a shoot? You know, and we went out and, you know, I showed him a few things and then he's just, you know, got on with it and progressed and, and you know, blossomed, yeah. you know, and I'm happy to help people and as most people are, so. No, absolutely. And thank you, uh, because, you know, not everyone feels like that. And I, I really want to say thank you to those, uh, you know, veteran light painters, if you will. I never, you know, eight years ago, you'd be like, wow, somebody's calling me a veteran light painter. <laughs> yeah. It's actually true, you know, and, and thank you, because, you know, a lot of young light painters do have questions and like myself are a little bit shy yeah. and maybe a little bit, um, I guess, gun shy to to reach out and, and ask. And I, and I want to go publicly to say if anyone wants to ask me anything or DM me or are you, you know, please feel free. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I know other people would be happy to, to answer questions for, you know, as well. So, yeah, please, please just ask us, you know, that's the that's how you're going to find out stuff, you know, and we'll I mean, it, it, you do have to learn some things just by practicing it. You know, I can teach you how to turn a torch on or do this or that, you know, but you have to just learn yourself certain things, but yeah, anything you need to know, just ask, you know, it's really uh, No, thank you. And, you know, speaking along the lines of rotation, I actually stemmed another question. I, I've never done a rotation before. I've never even done a 180 uh, north and south, which yeah. anyone can do on any tripod. You don't need a rotational tool, yeah. um, which I'm not sure why I haven't. I probably could just expand my creativity just in yeah, another world. It just, it'd, like, be another, it'd be another, you know, uh, another I don't even know why I haven't done it. Um, but the, the specific question would be, you know, let's go back to the pan head because, 
you know, you, you, you see all these rotational jibs and, and heavy gear and, yeah. you know, uh, can you talk to us about what piece of advice that, you know, that you are giving yourself? Can you, can you actually just show us and tell us yeah. more? So, so, I mean, that's a, you know, I don't know where you'll see that on, on the screen, but basically it's a pano head. So it's, it's meant to be used on a tripod like this and you'd have your camera on and you'd basically take, you know, shots shots through a landscape and then stitch them together. Yeah. Um, any anything that rotates would be good enough. And then it's two L brackets just to literally pull the center of gravity over here a bit more. Um, and I, yeah. I use that just for light for being light effectively. That's a couple of you know maybe a kilogram. Um, so it's not particularly heavy. Um, the gimbal I have is probably about four and a half kilograms, and and the the, the rotator I got off Chris Thompson is probably getting on to be eight or nine. <laughs> it's, oh. it's a solid welded bit of metal. I mean that it, it's the thing with with rotation is you know you just ask some people they will tell you what kit to get 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 say a gimbal is the easiest one because it all comes complete. You know you put your camera on, you set your you work out or measure between the bottom of your camera to the center of your lens and then you make sure whichever the axis um, through the rotator is at that point as well so you know as you rotate it round it's going through the center of the lens effectively as it goes round. you know once you've got that bit set up you know the world's your oyster you can rotate street lights houses you know everything looks pretty you get this sort of kaleidoscopic right yeah <laughs> yeah exactly yeah you get this kind of kaleidoscopic sort of um you know, images Chris Thompson did a lot when he, he first started and, and, you know, they're very futuristic, these kind of things, you know, and they look amazing as, as you know, you have a look through Chris's stream and you'll just be blown away through, you know, these, these kind of shots, you know, he, he's very prolific with that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I heard some audio clicking. Is that like every 30 degrees? Is that? Yeah. So, so the pano head, like a, a gimbal, you need to, well, I mean, you don't need to have a, um, an iPhone or a, um, an angle meter, you know, is, is a bit, you put it on um, and it will, as you turn it round, it will tell you what angle you're doing, you know, and I, I, most iPhones have got like a, a level um, built in as an app and you can put the, as it's going round to a certain angle, you can literally just put the iPhone on it and it'll tell you you're at 30 degrees, put the lens cap on, move it to the next spot, put it on the, again, that'll tell you at 90 degrees. These pano heads kind of negate the need for that because they've actually got um, built-in markings on here. So you've got five yeah. degrees, ten degrees, fifteen, twenty, thirty, forty-five. So you just basically move a thumb screw into that location, and it's got a little um, detent ball. And then when it's done up, obviously it locks and makes the noise as it goes around. So you you can only stop at those detents. So you know you're always getting those angles each time, which saves having a extra bits of kit. It's just about making your kit lighter a lot for me nowadays you know if i make stuff smaller if i'm going to make something I can make it smaller and i'll try and make it lighter as well so yeah. i can fit more of it in my bag because you know the older you get the heavier it is <laughs> no i couldn't agree more in fact i'm actually coming out with a yoga for light painters uh yes. for our back. <laughs> uh, no seriously and so I, I am a certified yoga instructor and i think it would help people to actually just say hey you know these are wrist exercises these are shoulder exercises this is lower back you know pain that we carry bags and gear and it's like no we need to be healthy you know it's like we always think about the end goal but we don't actually think about the process that you know yeah, to get yeah, there exactly. yeah. um okay well thank you Meg. That, that was great uh you know i've never done a rotation like i said but i think i'm going yeah, to do it, this do it. yeah just uh, so if you need any advice on what to get just give us a, a message and, I, and i'll tell you same with same with the guys out there you know if you need any advice please do ask you know and we'll, and we'll help out yeah i love it i love it all right mate one final question yeah nice no where do you see martin Barras in five years where, where do you see yourself in five years as an artist well hopefully still shooting you know to be yeah. fair i mean it, i was saying that having a young child is difficult you know i don't get out as much as i did before you know we, we had a, our, our son you know and I don't, I don't regret that at all you know it, it's you know it's a, it's a nice balance to have with a family you know, um, but I have seen, you know, like people like, like TCB and Andy K over the, my time that I really respected and admired, you know, ha aren't shooting anymore, you know, and then people like oh, Digi have come back into, you know, like painting again. So I hope that in five years time, I've still got the drive and, and, and desire to do it. Obviously, with anything, you know, the longer you do it for, you know, it's harder to get more inspired. 
you know, you have to dig a bit deeper in those sort of banks where you're going to drag your inspiration from, you know, but, you know, it, it, I wouldn't let it worry you because you always will find some inspiration. If you're artistic, you know, something will inspire yeah. you to pick up your camera again. You know, so for me, you know, if I'm still like painting and, and, and managing to knock out a few shots a year, I'll be quite happy. Yeah. Uh, well, I hope that really does happen um, for all of us in the community. You've been a huge inspiration. Yeah, uh, Martin, we, we can find your work on Facebook uh, under yeah, your on name. Yeah, on Facebook, um, yeah, under Mark Barris, yeah. Um, on Flickr, the same under Mark Barris, um, and Instagram, um, the same okay. as well, yeah. Awesome. I will put links in the description below. Um, I can't say thanks enough, mate. I think this is going to yeah, wrap the... <laughs> I, I am going to honestly look uh, deeper into your art, find inspiration, um, and I'm going to this winter, uh, you know, be dedicating at least one photo to you, my friend. So yeah, thank brilliant. you. Yeah, thanks. I'll keep an eye out for that. Cheers, buddy. Thank you. All right. Cheers, Cheers. mate. Thanks. It's been an honor. Cheers.